So I've got some time here before I need to go out. Um, and I just kind of want to read Isaiah 65 and 66. Because my brother, well, if some brothers and sisters went to a Torah convention yesterday on the Sabbath. Um, not to fellowship or anything, but to go and rebuke them because they're doing the feasts. And Hosea 8 says that those doing the feasts and teaching people to do the feasts um, unworthily because they're in Mystery Babylon, they don't have the right day. So the law, the great things in God's law tells us that you can't do the feasts at this time. So you've got to wait to do the feasts, which will be in the restoration of all things, which is the kingdom. This, that's the full instruction of God. Yes, the feasts are forever. But when you're in the land and when you can do it at the appointed time. Not to mention how much the prophets expound on that and say that God is going to take away the, the feasts and that the solemn assembly, this group, this end days group of people that God raises up are going to come to the full instruction and go, oh my goodness, we're not supposed to do the feasts. And in Zephaniah 3, these people are rebuking those and are shamed by those that are doing the feasts because they know it's wrong. Then you've got Ezekiel 22 and 44. Ezekiel 22 is about the unjust steward that doesn't repent. Ezekiel 44 is Luke 16. They teach the difference between the holy and profane. Jubilee 6, it's, it's the same exact language. So basically they went there to rebuke and it just sounds like it was absolutely just pinnacle Torah movement conduct they're so wicked there's a wickedness that is just feels even worse than the, that of the christian church because the christian church it's almost like they're just children like they have no idea what they're saying but then the torah movement it's like they've woke up to some milk but they still can't get rid of covetousness and so they're just they literally, it's like they, they blaspheme the word of God even more. Because it's, they attach themselves to Judah and the, the law will never depart from Judah. So they attach themselves to Judah, start doing Jewish traditions like um, dusk to dusk Sabbath, like the day begins in, at night time. Um, they start doing the feasts and it, there's pro even prophecies of Ephraim envy in Judah, which is not surprising at all. It's like they want to be like Judah, but not um, the good portion of Judah. They want to be like um, the Judah that's feasting, that has all these traditions. I don't know what it is. It's a spiritual condition. It's, it's covetousness. Ephraim is those in America doing the feasts. Like, go and read Hosea 8. Come on. But... I wanted to read Isaiah 65 and 66 and do a woman's teaching on it. For the women in the Torah movement that are getting tripped up by the feasts, because it's a stumbling block, it really is. So is the Paleo-Hebrew stuff. There's a few things that's a stumbling block when you wake up to the truth. But especially the feasts, because it's... Oh, it's like... This... Isaiah 65 and 66 is the Beatitudes. Zephaniah 3 is the Beatitudes. It's about this group of people that come out of the left and come out of the right. And they stand in, in, they stand in judgment. They're rebuking in the gate. They stand in the gap. All these different idioms for rebuking sin. Like they stand in the gate. And what gate is it? It's the gate into the kingdom. They're rebuking you to tell. They're telling you how to get into the kingdom. And it's the unjust steward that can do that. And he, he says, write a check for half. That means don't don't do the feasts. You can't do the feasts. You don't need to touch the you don't touch Sinai. Um, you can't do sacrificial law. Like I'm hearing women in this um congregation wearing pink tzitzit. It's just like it's insanity. They won't lift a finger for other people, so they get caught up in sacrificial law, in have that that's covetousness if you can't say that that is covetousness you don't have any discernment you need to you need to just like pink zitzits pink tassels the tassels that actually i don't know it's num it's somewhere in numbers 
The tassels, it's so ironic, right? The tassels aren't even just to, to remind you to keep the Ten Commandments. It's even more specifically quoting Deuteronomy 12. It says the tassels should be a reminder to you not to do what is right in your own eyes. And what does God say in Deuteronomy 12? He tells them, you do these feasts in the city where I put my name, which is Jerusalem. And he says, and don't do that which is right in your own eyes. People are in Babylon right now doing the feasts. That's what's right in your eyes. God knows our hearts. He knows that we, um, he just wants us to try. No, he prefers mercy, not sacrifice. He doesn't want your feasts. He doesn't want you to be um, sacrificing his offering and eating it. Furnishing a drink offering unto that number. Thinking, oh, we're God's chosen people. We came out of the Christian church. We're, we're, we're doing God's feasts now. And they're literally doing these feasts. Thinking they're, that they're the elect. The Beatitudes are all against those people because it's the elect that actually rebukes them. That's the ironic thing. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed is the poor in spirit. Oh my goodness, the poor and contrite spirit that trembles at the word of God. That means that they obey the full instruction of God. The, the sacrifice acceptable to God is communication. That's rebuking for sin. That's not putting someone under sacrificial law, telling them they have to wear tassels or telling them they have to do the feast when they don't have to. Tell them people it's a sin to not be circumcised. You've missed the gospel. You've, abs you've just missed the gospel and now you're sat having your feast, blessing yourself, thinking you're the 144,000 and you're going to be destroyed by them. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Uh, Granddad's going to come soon. Dear me. But this is just important because the, ba the Beatitudes meet that was revealed to us so recently is all about the feasters. It's all about, it's about those who fulfill the royal law and stand in judgment in controversy, Ezekiel 44. It's controversial. They're rebuking the feasters. It's about those who actually, because the, the sacrifice worthy of God is a poor and contrite spirit, AKA communication, which is in Hebrews 13. So the communication is the royal law. Ezekiel 34 tells you that these sh so-called shepherds and people in the Torah movement they was, God woke them up so that they would start communicating and telling the Christians to keep the Ten Commandments and keeping each other accountable. None of them are doing this, man. I can't even communicate with words how wicked these people are. And they think that by being nice or not raising your voice is the fruit of the Spirit. You are absolutely done for. You are so wicked. I, like... Why would you lie about following the Torah and call yourself the Torah movement? It's so stupid. They don't have any faith. They've missed the gospel. It's a, th it's like a, it's just a hobby to them. It's just a, it's a pastime. It's a, it's something that defines them. Like they're not taking, they're taking it as a light thing. They could not give a shit about you. I'm telling you. If they would just teach the covenant to their brothers and sisters and actually had a heart and got fully purged of that covetousness and had that heart, got weaned from the milk, understood the royal law and they came fully away from the leaning on your own understanding, they would never have done the feast. They would, they would, or they would have repented from doing the feast. But they, they want the sacrifice of his offering and God isn't going to accept it. God wants them to communicate, keeping the Ten Commandments and taking burdens off of people. They're adding burdens to people. I don't know. Like, I just... I literally pray to God for the best possible words that will get you women to understand just how dangerous it is to do the feasts and be a part of this Torah movement. 
I want the words to tell you, to scare you, to get you to obey, and to, or just, to, just so that it'll click in your brain, so that it'll be revealed to you. But I know it's the Spirit of God that does that. It's the foolishness of preaching. But it's not my words. But I just, I just pray that I want, I just want better words. I want the Spirit to just give us better words because this is so serious. I mean, Hosea 8. I've written to them the great things in Deuteronomy 12 and 16 that told them that they can't do the feast outside of the land. But they consider it a strange thing. They're going to sacrifice, sacrifice his offer and eat it. And he's, God's not going to accept it and they're going to go in tribulation. What more do you want? You covetous people. Leading people astray. Leading away the weak in the faith. I just, honestly, it just, it, it boils my blood. I, um, okay, let's just read Isaiah 65 and 66. So, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. What does that mean? When, when God spreads out his hand or he, um, his arm is stretched out still. That's the... That's God's love. So it's interesting. So it's like, his love is conviction. So he will convict people through their conscience. But he's not supping with them. He's not dwelling with them. He's knocking on the door. But they haven't received the spirit of truth yet. So he's, he hasn't like, um, came to sup with them. So he's like this. He's like knocking at the window, trying to get their attention, convicting them. Um, you know, sending people to, to rebuke them on his behalf. But they are rebellious. They don't listen to that. That's why God won't sup with them. And at one point, maybe they did. Maybe God was supping with them and showing them things. And then the spirit withdraws because they stop, they stop listening to that conviction. And then they sear the conscience. And then the latter end of them is even worse. So his arm is stretched out still. There's always an opportunity to repent. We can repent at any time. It doesn't matter what you do, you can repent. If you truly repent, the opportunity is there. So his conviction, his spirit of grace works through our conscience to convict us, to bring us to repentance. So that's what it means by his hand is stretched out and that's the father's love. That doesn't mean he subs with you. That doesn't mean he actually, um, he's teaching you the Bible or anything like that because the people that aren't listening to him aren't, aren't getting shown anything. Whatever they're getting shown, it's by a different spirit. I've spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walk in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. So with the thing with prophecy is that you, you can always take it to the left or to the right, usually. Sometimes it is more specific. So in Proverbs, we're told, um, go not to the left or to the right. Stay down the narrow path. That's what the Messiah is saying. He's saying, stay down the narrow path. So there's a left and there's a right. Ezekiel 4. Ezekiel, lie on your left side for Israel, on your right side for Judah. Now you've got the idiom. So the left is Israel. Israel's in the Gentiles, so it's the Christian church, basically, because they learn the ways of the heathen, the, the sin of Samaria, the golden calf, Christmas tree. All this stuff, all these traditions are attached to the left. And then when people come out of the left, they jump into the frying pan of Judah because the Torah movement is attaching themselves to Judah. By, so it's basically the left and the right are both traditions of men. So you've got the left traditions and the right traditions. The traditions of men on the right, I mean on the left, would be like the Christmas tree, um, praying to Mary, the rosary, idols. Um, it's another good one. And their kind of traditions like saved by favor. Um, what's some of the good ones? Saved by, yeah, saved by grace, like thing, things like that. And then you've got on the right, you've got Doing the feasts outside of the land. They even still define a lot of the... So it's so hard to get everything out at once. Um, so they'll do dusk to dusk Sabbath. That's a tradition of Judah and Babylon. And then you've got sacrificial law, the blend sacrificial law. You've got traditions associated with their feasts. Um, Hanukkah, 
all these other things. So you've got these two, two, the left and the right, these two sides, and that's neither of them are the narrow path because the narrow path is under steward. There's two everlasting covenants within the instruction, AKA law, and um, not to be confused with sacrificial law that was taken away. But these idiots over here are blending sacrificial law and telling you, you need to circumcise your penis still. That's no, the sacrificial law, the circumcision was a token of sacrificial law Anyone saying that you're in sin for not circumcising your penis doesn't have a circumcised heart and you shouldn't listen to them at all. Anyone wearing pink tassels telling you that you're telling um, you that you need to wear tassels or I just prefer the colour pink, don't listen to them at all. Anyone doing these things that say that the fruits of the spirit is gentleness and um, being nice to people, not raising your voice when someone's in sin and warning them of their sin so that they don't go to great tribulation. Don't listen to them. Get as far away from those people as possible. And it makes us more mad because the Christian church, so Christian women in the Christian church, right? They look at us, people trying to be the unjust steward and say, look, no, there's only two covenants in the law. And then... That's what you need to obey. This is the gospel. Teach others to do so. Pass it on quick, quick, quick. Like the world's about to end. Um, um, I've just read a message and I shouldn't have because I've just lost my train of thought. Yeah, so the Christian women will look at me and be like, oh, she's a, a Hebrew roots heretic. And it makes us always feel like, Oh man, like you Hebrew rooters, like you've really done a number on the church, but it's like, nah, because a lost sheep in the Christian church anyway is going to hear what I'm saying and be like, oh, that is different from the Hebrew roots. So it's, I mean, but it's just the confusion. Like, no wonder people are just like, Ugh, because I remember being there. But if your heart posture is, is right and you ask for the truth, he will not reject you, basically. Um. So anyway, we'll just keep going. So they're walking in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. Go to Deuteronomy 12. He says, don't do what's right in your own eyes. Don't do the feasts on a day that's right in your eyes. You're not making difference between the holy and profane. You are Ezekiel 22. You are not Ezekiel 44. It's like, and then Ezekiel 22 and Ezekiel 44 is the Beatitudes. It's like, Ezekiel 44 is the blessed. And Ezekiel 22 is the people that the blessed are trying to rebuke. So that they can become blessed too. But then Ezekiel 22 just hide behind. Shalom, shalom. You shouldn't raise your voice at us. Because they're still, they're still holding to onto some of the covetous, nice, nice sort of behaviours of the church that they used to go to. It's the, like the spirit in this world and in the church is just that whenever someone's telling the truth or is urgent about anything or authoritative about anything, they're just like rebellious little like brats. Like, they just don't want to hear the truth. Like, if you're not read Ezekiel 2, 3, and 33, it's not the servants that are speaking to you and rebuking you. It's God through them. That's how, that's how God would trust no man. Yeah, you don't trust no man. You trust the spirit of God that's in that man or that woman. Like, that's how God's spirit works. That's how we're supposed to build the kingdom. Fools. A people that provokes me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifices in gardens and burns incense, which is praying, upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their, in their vessels. Christians, there you go, this is end time punishment. He literally tells you in Isaiah 65 and 66 that you're going to be burnt. You're going to be destroyed in the fire judgment for eating unclean because you're blaspheming. The rainbow covenant. You just forgot about Genesis 6 to 9. It's everlasting. The covenant was made with the entire world. Who do you think you are to go around saying, saved by favor, by the blood of the lamb? You don't, you don't have, a, have a clue. But it's like... Oh, and then also, actually, the, you've, I've literally heard of people in the Torah movement who are going to oyster festivals. People in the Torah movement who claim to follow the Torah... Claim to be eaten clean. Sometimes they just eat unclean. There's no fear in these people. They couldn't give a shit about what God said. It's a hobby to them. It's a pastime. It's like a, it's just, what's the word? It's just, 
it's it's almost like Joe and someone's like, oh, I'm a footballer. Oh, I'm a singer. Oh, I'm a, I'm a Torah follower. Like, it's just a thing. Like, they just have a community. Like, that kind of, it's just, that's all it is to them. They don't actually care about what God wants. They don't actually care about saving other people. They don't have any faith in the prophecies that the world is about to be, it's the end of the world as we know it and the kingdom's coming. They don't care. Because surely if they believed that, they would stop doing what they were doing for the sake of their own children. Like, there's just no faith. You talk about saved by faith alone. You have no faith. <laughs> um, Which remain among the graves, uh, eating abominable things. And they say, stand by yourself, come not near unto me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in God's nose, a fire that burns all the day. These same people, when you go and rebuke them, stand by thyself, get away from me. You can't rebuke me. You don't know me. Just absolute hypocrites. Behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense, recompense into their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense up upon the mountains, prayed upon the mountains, and blasphemed me upon the hills. They've prayed... Um, so mountains and hills are places of worship. You've prayed in the churches and you've blasphemed the word of, word of God in places, places of worship. So in your synagogues, in your churches, you're just blaspheming God, reading sermons and totally just making up what God said, saying things he didn't say, interpreting it wrong because you don't have the spirit of truth. Praying in the churches and it just amounts to nothing. He says, I don't even hear you. Your hands are full of blood. You don't care about the people. You don't care about your own children. You don't care about what God's word says. This is just a something you do on a, a Sunday or a Friday night. <sighs> Thus saith the Lord. This is a good bit. Thus saith the Lord. As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servants' sakes, that I might not destroy them all. So... God isn't going to, so there's going to be a great sacrifice and a big destruction, but God isn't going to destroy them all for his servant's sake because it's his servant that actually care about the people. He's going to save his lost sheep and he's going to gather them and many are going to be turned to righteousness because of the servants. And that's a comfort because that's why we do it. That's literally the only reason we do it. We care about our families and, our, and other people's families because we actually have faith that God isn't playing around when he says that people are going to be burnt up for this shit. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and my elect shall inherit it and my servant shall dwell there. Beatitudes. Who's going to inherit the holy mountain? The elect. Blessed equals the elect. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks and the valley of Achor, a place for the herds to lie down in. For my people that have sought me, I think that's a second Exodus reference. This is just, this is unbelievable prophecy. Listen to this. But you are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, the elect, um, that prepare a table for that troop and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. You're preparing a table and having a drink, feasting unto that number, the 144,000. I know that the Torah movement think that they're the 144,000. A lot of them do. They'll be doing the feast. They will have just done first fruits or they're preparing for first fruits. Oh, it's just annoying. Sitting there actually blessing themselves as the 144,000 in the ironic thing is that they were called to be Jacob many were called to be Jacob many were called to be the 144,000 but you chose not you would rather feast you preferred sacrificing a sacrifice of his offering when he didn't ask for it so he's going to reject you instead of the sacrifice of communication they don't rebuke each other I'm telling you I know that they don't rebuke each other the amount of times I've heard conflicting stories where it's like, why didn't this person rebuke this other person for the sin? Because they don't love anyone. They think that love is just being nice. And if, if so, if I went to a woman in the Torah movement and started rebuking her and I like get loud and shout like I do in these videos, because I'm thinking about the, the kids, her kids at home. Or I'm thinking about how many people she's leading astray. Bearing the indignation of the Lord. 
She's going to tell me I don't have the fruits of the Spirit. That is just, it, it's, she's blaspheming the Holy Spirit in doing that. Because this is the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm not saying it to boast. That's the thing. But they know that they don't have the fruits of the Spirit. They just, it's like. When someone's ears are shut, they truly are shut. Stiff-necked. So these people doing the feast, they're, fur they're furnishing their feast. Blessing themselves, thinking that they're the 144,000. When they're not. They're not. And also, you've got the Christians as well, who even do like the Lord's Supper and stuff like that. They think that they're the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is the 144,000. So they're doing the same thing. I said to Queen, we're the bride of Christ. Oh my goodness. Therefore, because they do this, because they furnish a drink offer into that number when they're not, and instead they actually forsake that number. They forsake the Holy Mountain. Therefore will I number you to the sword and you shall all bow down to the slaughter. The sword. It's tribulation. It's Hosea 8. You you did. You got done doing Christmas and Easter and you started doing God's feast. So you're going to go into tribulation because you wouldn't listen to the rebuke. And instead you just blessed yourself to that number. So you're going to be numbered to the sword. And you shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, when I called you to be Jacob, you did not answer. And when I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before my eyes, and did choose that wherein I, de I delighted not. What did he delight in? Mercy. It's rebuke. That's, that's the sacrifice that he wants. But you're going to sacrificial law in doing the feasts. That's not what he wants. That He doesn't delight in that. He doesn't want you profane in his feasts. He wants you to teach people the difference between the holy and profane because it's such a stumbling block and it's hard for people to come out of it because they're confused. Like, how do people know the right day? Like, I don't know the day. You can't figure out the day. You're never going to do it. The, whatever day that you've picked is an abomination to God. They are actually his set apart feasts and you're just profane in them. It's a perfect word. You were called to be Jacob. You were called to be a servant, which means you rebuke sin and communicate. To do good and communicate, forget not. Well, you forgot that. You forgot the holy mountain. And instead, you went and did the feasts because you couldn't care less about anyone else. You couldn't care less about saving people. You only want to save yourself. And ironically, it's you that's going to tribulation because he's going to bring upon you your um, fears. Um... Therefore, will, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Blessed are, they, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, but they shall be filled. But you won't be filled. My servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. My servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Because they, they're all eating and drinking now. They're eating and drinking with the drunken now. They've returned to the drunkards of Ephraim. They're all feasting. Totally deluded, but they're going to be thirsty and they're going to be hungry. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. It's all the Beatitudes. Behold, my servants shall sing. Hello? Caleb, come here. Brushing your teeth like a good boy. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of spirit. So the servants mourn now and they rejoice in New Jerusalem. You are rejoicing and feasting and eating and drinking now. And uh, instead of mourning for your brothers and sisters, so you're going to be weeping and crying. You can't save your children in tribulation. You shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen, for the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name, the new name, the white stone. Um, 
it goes on to talk about the new covenant and obviously that is that is beautiful so go and read it but the point i want to make right now is about the torah movement so i'm going to go straight into 66 i don't know how much time i'm going to have because my dad is coming thus saith the lord the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool where is the house that you build unto me and where is the place of my rest? For all those things is my hand made, and all of those things, saith the Lord. And not all of those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is a poor is of a poor and contrite spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor and contrite spirit is those that tremble at the word of God. Listen to this. So God will look. To him that is of a poor and contrite spirit, which is him that's fulfilling the royal law, rebuking in the gate, um, Hebrews 13, and trembles at my word, the full instruction, the full counsel. Listen to this. This is who God doesn't look to. He that kills an ox as if he slew a man, and he that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offers an oblation as if he offered swine's blood, and he that burns incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations. They delight in the sacrifice of his offering. But God does not delight in that. He does not accept it. He doesn't accept your profaned version of his feast when he told you not to do it. He said, go and find my sheep instead. But you would not. So the person that trembles at the, at the full counsel of God is not the person do it, sacrifice in a Passover lamb. I also will choose their delusions. This is your judgment for this. And will bring their fears upon them. Because they're trying to save themselves. They don't care about other people. But they're actually going to go into tribulation. Their children are going to be killed. And then when you raise your voice at them for that. Because it's, it's love and it's the anger of God. It's like. They think that that's just of the flesh. Are you joking me? You are just operating in the flesh. That's why you're doing the feast anyway. The world's about to be destroyed and you're feasting. It's just a joke. Um, we're going to get the same as what we've read in Isaiah 65 too. I will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when he, when he called, you didn't answer. And when I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Deuteronomy 12. Hear the word of the Lord, you that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. You rebuke them for doing the feast. So you rebuke any, you re rebuke sin at all. And then when they cast you out and separate themselves from you, calling your name evil, when you were trying to save their life, he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. They're going to be ashamed for doing that. This is the Beatitudes. Blessed are you. A voice of the noise of the... Of, from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that renders recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child, the 144,000, Jacob, my servant, New Jerusalem. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? I will, should I bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice you with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all you that love her. Rejoice for her with joy, all you that mourn for her. Um, this verse is actually, it's so beautiful because there's, there seems to be a blessing attached with those who love New Jerusalem or love the 144,000. Um, like if you just love the servants, I think that you're going to get the same blessing. You're going to be able to rejoice with her. You're going to also escape what's coming. Um, I don't know exactly how that's going to look. I don't know if it's like... Because the 144,000 are the men. That are the, it's like the army of God. But there's, there's usually an elect number of women and children within that. But the women are never numbered. They're, in the Bible, women are never numbered. But they were there. So, But it's interesting. And we know that there are going to be kings and queens, sons and daughters... Um, but the army, I believe, is going to be 144,000 men. 
that are numbered. Um, but there's a few other things like in John 17, it's not just those who are sanctified in the word that are going to be blessed, but those that hear them and can confirm it. It's beautiful. Because we're all one. It does, no, one no one just wants authority or um, it's like not a power kick or anything like that. It's like, if I only have one talent, I want to share that talent to help someone else with that talent. And then because what if they have three talents and then they give me three talents and they can give other people four talents? That's how it's supposed to work. But covets people aren't like that. They just want, they want the attention for themselves. They want to save themselves. And then they end up doing things like the feast. So, that you may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, that you may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall you suck, you shall be borne upon her sides and be dandled upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. If you're mourning and trying to find your brothers and sisters now, no matter what that means, no matter who you are, that's saying that you will be comforted in New Jerusalem, whether you are New Jerusalem or not. Like, that's actually so amazing. Because it doesn't matter to me whether I am a part of the elect or whatever. I just want to be... Because even if I'm not, like... Right, so think about it this way. Even if I'm not the, like... Say there's like different tiers of hierarchy. If I'm not like the top favorite elect or whatever, if I can find them and God is pleased at me for doing that, that's what I want to do. Like if you are that top tier elect, like I'm doing this to find you. So that's what it means to mourn. It means lamentation, mourn and woe. You're teaching the word of God to people and rebuking their sin so that they can get right with God. Because that person might be like, like, could you imagine though, finding God's special lost sheep and God just being so overjoyed because he really wanted that lost sheep. And then you're just like, I'm glad I did that. Like, it's just, it's cute. But I was probably a really like, I hope, I hope I put that okay. But I'm sure you can hear my heart. Well, some of you will be able to hear my heart. Um... You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. The next verse, the way I'm going on is kind of funny. And when you see this, when you see that you will be comforted in Jerusalem, your heart shall flourish and your bones shall flourish like a herb and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants and his indignation towards his enemies. I know I'm a servant of God because the Beatitudes tells me so. Because we're fulfilling the Beatitudes without even realizing it. Then they get revealed and then our bones flourish. And we're like, okay, keep mourning for your brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter who we are. Let's go and keep trying to find the next person, the next person, the next person. And we will be comforted in Jerusalem. That's a promise. If you're seeking office, you're going down a slippery slope. Seriously. Um, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind, it's 144,000, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. This is why we're doing this. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. The sanctifying themselves under a tree eaten swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse, they shall all be consumed together with fire, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts, and it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, Pull and Lud, that draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off, that have not heard my fame. Um, this is the second exodus. People are going to be invited to the wedding. They're going to replace the seats of those who were invited beforehand. They're going to go to tribulation. Then the people who never got to hear the fame of the Lord are going to be invited to the wedding. Um, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles and all these Gentile nations. And they shall bring all your brethren. Caleb, he's, he's brushing his toothbrush. He's using his toothbrush to brush the fireplace. I hope that's not too loud. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all the nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules. 
upon swift beats, be <laughs> swift beats. Nice. to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. That's the Gentiles. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. That's what it says in 65 as well. The elect, the servants, um, are going to be blessed and their offspring with them. So the virgins from Revelation 14 aren't literal virgins. They have the key of David. They make themselves virgin, virgins three days of the week. It's a sexual fast so that they, they're blameless on the Sabbath. Go and learn what David did. There's, there are some eunuchs that make themselves eunuchs for the kingdom, kingdom of heaven's sake. So that with the fast from sex for three days under the Sabbath. Um, Paul teaches it in 1 Corinthians 7. Don't defraud one another as husband and wife. Have sex when you want to have sex, you know. But unless... It's for, it's with consent and you give yourself to fasting and prayer so that both couple, both partners have to be in agreement. That's the key of David. It's a meaty blessing. It is amazing. I think I am going to do a video on it for any women that want it, but it's just, it's not, we don't teach it by commandment. It's by permission. Um, only some can receive it. So let them receive it. I've posted a video that my husband and a brother did on the cave, David. It They go through every single scripture and read everything out loud. So you can just read along with them. Um, I've obviously just rattled it off there a little bit. Um, just to see just to see if you actually are interested. I want you to, to want to know what it is because it is just, it's amazing. It's a real, it's a blessing. Um, it's everywhere. Like it's just... That's how you know it's the spirit of God that reveals this stuff to us. It's like, it's amazing. Like we could, like how, it's everywhere, but you would never see it without the spirit of God. Like, how has it gone this long? With the, how does no one know what the key of David is? It's crazy. Um, so that's, that. the 144,000 have the key of David. Like, they're not literal virgins. They have children. Their children are going to be blessed too. It shall, and it shall come to pass that from one, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. That's when, the, that's the kingdom. New Jerusalem, the new covenant, the restoration of all things, the restoration of the feast, the restoration of the calendar, of the language, Zephaniah 3. It's going to be beautiful. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorrent unto all flesh. They're in hell. And your Messiah says this as well. Where the worm doesn't die and the fire isn't quenched. Go and look when the Messiah is saying that and then come back and read this because to give you context. Wait to do the feasts. We're not in the, new, in the new covenant yet. We're not in the kingdom yet. Wait to do the feast. Wait on the Lord. And watching and waiting means to rebuke sin. So you watch, which means rebuke sin, and you wait for the meat and juice season, which is God revealing new meat to you. Watch and wait. Watch ye therefore. Watch and pray. It's all idioms for the same thing. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, yeah. Don't be tripped up by these feasters. Please, like... Time's so short. Um.